Mrs. Walmart didn't like me. I was seven years old, dressed like a boy, and in a moment of rashness, had stuck out my tongue at her. It wasn't my first offense. I'd had a few red cards for talking in class, and a note had gone home to my parents. My mom knew I could be boisterous. There was no question about that. But she wasn't convinced I was the only party at fault. Mrs. Walmart was a crotchety teacher, and I was a whippersnapper, so my mom volunteered to come in as a class parent. This way, she could keep an eye on me and assess whether I was being picked on by my teacher or was simply being obnoxious. The latter was a definite possibility. I was an emotional kid in first grade, with no idea how to handle these emotions. A funny thing about twins is that they can switch personalities. You don't mean to, it just happens. One of you takes one position, and the other, instinctively, will balance things out. In junior high, I would be the quiet one, trailing in Rachel's wake. But in grade school, it was the other way around. All through kindergarten, which our mom made us repeat until she felt Rachel was ready to move up a grade, I'd answer for my sister in class, and I was just as outspoken at home. Our grandpa had nicknames for us both at that age. I was Ma Barker to my sister's Sweet Muffin. Part of my loudness was temperament, but there was definitely a practical side to it, too. We were a large, rambunctious family, and you had to raise your voice or no one would hear you. By the time Rachel and I were born in 1985, our oldest brother, Michael, had moved out to live with his dad in San Diego. But that still left Sisse, who was 15 and had been living with my parents since she was 11, Jenny, 8, and 5-year-old Brian, plus a series of extended family members who came and went over the years. Right after we were born, my mom's sister Melanie and her daughter Alita lived with us for a while. When we were in high school, my grandpa Jack moved in. And much later, my parents took in Austin, Brian's son, and raised him from babyhood. This is what my parents do. They look after people. My mom, Denise, since forever, she's the second eldest of eight children and the oldest girl, with parents who were both alcoholics, and my dad, Jim, from the age of 30 when he married my mom. She was 23 when they started dating and came with a lot of baggage. A bitter ex-husband, two young children, a dying mother out in Nevada, and a soon-to-be orphan nine-year-old sister who needed somewhere to live. It was a lot for a 30-year-old bachelor to take on, particularly one who was struggling professionally. When my parents met, my dad had been living in San Diego for 10 years and had worked as a commercial fisherman, a car salesman, the owner of a flatbed truck, and a crane operator. My mom, meanwhile, had been a waitress, a dental assistant, and a clerk at a shipping company, and at that point was mainly caring for her mom. A lot of guys in my dad's shoes would have run for the hills. There was nothing in his background that prepared him for my mom's family, a huge Catholic clan. My mom had 32 first cousins, and that's just on her mom's side, that had lived through some pretty tough times. Her dad, who had been in the army, was verbally abusive and highly critical of his kids, and, at least towards the boys, sporadically violent. He was also serially unemployed. Growing up in San Bernardino, the family was frequently broke, and while my mom's mom was a coper, she was often put in the impossible position of trying to raise eight kids on a waitress salary. My dad, by contrast, was raised in a stable middle-class home by a stay-at-home mom and a firefighter dad. He had one brother, which is why, perhaps, he was so drawn to my mom's large family. Far from being alienated by the mess and the noise, my dad found it wonderfully warm and inviting. My parents have a lot in common. Both moved to Southern California from other parts of the country as kids. Both had fathers who were veterans. My paternal grandfather had fought in France in the Second World War, and my mom's dad was a veteran of the Korean War, which, looking back, explains some of his behaviors. Long after the fact, my mom and her siblings realized he probably had undiagnosed PTSD. Both my parents are easygoing, generous, hardworking people with a kooky sense of humor. But most of all, they place a high value on family. My mom never says no when someone needs a bed for the night. 
My dad is a shirt-off-his-back kind of guy. After the disappointment of Bill, my mom's first husband, who could be slightly too much like her dad for comfort, her siblings fell in love with my dad. And for a while, the refrain when someone needed help in the family was, Call Jim! After my parents married and had Brian, it seemed natural for them to move up to Reading, to be near my mom's sisters. A year after they moved, they had Rachel and me.